everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial. And today we are once again traveling back to the Age of Darkness, the Horus Heresy, and we are painting Dominion Zephon, the bringer of sorrow. He's such a cool model. I really love this model. Obviously, I'm a Blood Angels fan. So, <laughs> without further ado, what we're going to do is jump in and start painting him. And, well, he's been primed in Grey Seer. And the place we are going to start is on all of his armour. And the colour we're going to be using first for this is Blood Angels Red. And we're just going to grab some of that up on our brush. And we're just going to start painting it all over all of his armour panels. Just like this. Just taking it very steady. A panel at a time. Sticking to the tip of our brush. I'm using a medium layer brush here. Getting that lovely smooth surface across all of the red. Now you need a hand with where all this is going to go because there is a lot of trim. And the shoulder pads are a different colour, for example. Do just check out the box art. But otherwise, you just want to start going around just like this. And then once that's done, we'll come back. And so with that Blood Angels Red all applied, what we are now going to do is move on. We're not going to highlight it or anything just yet. We're going to wait until the end once we've got all of the base coats on on Dominion Zephon. So in that spirit, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Basilicarnum Grey and we're going to use this for all of the black details. So this is going to include areas such as the soft joints in his armour, the leather the grip of the sword and the field of the shoulder pads. And this is our little pre-shade that we're doing first to really make sure that that black Templar, when we come to put it on next, comes up nice and strong. And so with that Basilicarnum Grey applied to all of those details, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Black Templar and we're going to put this over the top. Just like this, and this is going to give us a really strong finish. just like this. And so with that Black Templar applied, you should now have a model that looks somewhat like this. Now, don't worry, it's still drying a little bit at the minute, but that's okay because what we're gonna do is again, move on to the other big colors. And well, the next one is going to be Lead Belcher. It's gonna be for all of the silver details. Now there is a ton of them on Dominion Zephon because well, it's got a lot of bionics. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna very carefully go around picking out all of the silver bits. Just like this. So we've got the arms, the legs, various mechanical details around the model. Of 
course, the weapon. Just like this. And if you need help, once again, do just check out the box art on where to place these colors. So that lead belts are applied to all of those silver details. As you can tell, there is rather a lot. What we are gonna do now is we are gonna once again move on and the color we're gonna be using next is Retributor Armor. Now there's a ton of gold all over the miniature. So once again, just take your time, make sure you've got that box art on hand, to figure out where to place it. But ultimately it's pretty much all of the trim, all of the decorative features. We're gonna be picking out all of the gems all of the teardrops, for example, as well. The studs on this shoulder pad, all of it with this Retributor armor. There are a couple of things that aren't Retributor armor, such as the large skull here and the paper, but otherwise it's pretty much all of the rest of it. So just take your time. Making your way around. So with that Retributor armor applied, as you can see, there is a lot of gold detailing on here. But what we're gonna do is we've just got a couple more base coats left to add. And the first one is Skeleton Horde. I'm gonna be adding this over the paper areas, just here on the shoulder pad. And it's literally just this. Little plate just there. And with that done, what we're then gonna do is take some apothecary white. We're gonna paint this over the top of this skull, just here on the shoulder pad. So with that done, our base coats are now all on, on Dominion Zephon. There was a couple of extra areas that needed some additional black, for example, just down here and on the two, kind of the pipe there, here and here. So I've just added some black Templar on there as well. But apart from that, we are now ready to go with the shading. Now, the color we're gonna be using first for this is a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part black Templar mix. We're going to be using this over the top of all of the silver. This is going to give us that really nice kind of slightly older, more oily look to all of the metallic silver across the model that you get on the box art. This it look kind of well kept. like this. So we just want to go over all of the silver like this, including the sword. So with that done, you should now have some gorgeously shaded silver all the way around. Dominion Zephon. He looks really, really good. <laughs> so what we're going to do next is we're going to shade the gold. And the color we're going to be using for this is Fire Slayer Flash. And we're just going to very carefully now Apply this over the top of all of those gold details, just like that. So 
So with that done, Dominion Zephon is now a, what I would call a war hipster battle ready. He looks awesome already, but we are now going to take him to the next level as per usual. And well, the way we're going to do this is by adding some highlights. Now, the first one we're going to use is Evil Sun Scarlet, and this is going to be for all of the red. And well, we just want to take a tiny amount of this on the end of our brush, and we just want to start picking out all of the edges around the model. Now, because there's so much trim that's been done with gold, there isn't actually a whole heap of red highlights to do. So just keep an eye out for certain areas. So you've got areas like this little elbow pad just here. Like that, we've got the helmet as well. Got the boots. We've got the gauntlets or hands, I should say. And we've got the backpack as well. So just have a hunt around. Do this gauntlet as well here. So with that evil sun scarlet applied to all of our red edges, what we're now going to do is going to add our little spot highlight. Now we want this to be quite subtle. And well, the color we're going to be using for this is Fire Dragon Bright. And really all we're going to do is we're just going to pick out the sharpest corners across all of these armor plates. So we've got one there, there, and there as well. Got this little bit just there the tip of the beak like that just like this very subtle but it will just give that armor that little shine just how we want it so with that Fire Dragon Bright applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the black details. And so with that Dawnstone applied, we're then going to do very similarly like we did with the Fire Dragon Bright. We're just going to take some Administratum Grey. I'm going to add this to the sharpest points. All that black. So with those black details all highlighted, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on all the silver. And the color we're going to be using first for this is Iron Hand Steel. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take a tiny amount of this on our brush. And as per usual so far, what we're going to do is we are just going to start picking out all of the edges on all of the silver. So that iron hand steel applied to all of those silver details, don't worry about doing a final highlight on them just yet. We're going to be doing that a little bit later. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to do a highlight on all the gold. And the color we're going to be using first for this is Liberator Gold. So with that done, he's looking pretty cool. So what we're gonna do now is gonna do the final highlight across the gold, the silver, but we're also gonna block in the gems just to give them that little bit of extra punch. And the color that we're gonna be using for this is some Stormhose Silver. Now what we're gonna be doing, for example, on the silver with the Stormhose Silver, so for example, on the blade, we're just gonna be adding this down the cutting edge 
just like that. Just give it that little bit of extra sparkle. Just a little bit of an overlap there on the blade. And on that side, you know, just wipe that off with the thumb, that's not a problem. Just like that. And there is the gold, for example. I'm just going to add a little bit of this to the corners. For example, just there on the shoulder pad. And then on all the gems, what we're going to do is we're just going to paint this over the top of the whole of them. Just like that. It's going to make them nice and shiny for when we come to put their actual colour over the top. So with that done, all of our metallics are now finished. Well, for now, the sword has got a little bit of extra stuff we're going to do towards the base a little bit later. But we are now on to, well, doing just the last couple of things. So we've got the skull, we've got the paper, and we've got, well, all those gems. And we've also got the lightning marbling effect on this shoulder pad left to do. So in order to do those gems, the first thing we need to do is we need to take some Dark Angels Green. And we want to drop this into his eye lens slots. Just in here. Like that. And like that. So with that done, what we're then going to do is going to take some Flesh Terrors Red. Now we're not going to be using this on all of the teardrops because a number of them are in fact a purple colour. But what we are going to do is we're going to use this on the one just here on the pouch, like that. We're going to use it up here on the shoulder pad and just here as well. I'm going to use it on the sword rubies. There and on the other side as well. And we're also going to use it just down here on the knee. Like that. And we'll use it here on this pouch as well, just for a bit of symmetry with the other one. And so with that Flesh Terror is red applied, what we then do is take some Shayish Purple. I'm going to use this on all of our remaining gems. So with that shyish purple applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to start highlighting all of the lenses and all of the gems. First color we're going to be using is moot green, and this is going to be for our green eye lenses. And all we want to do here is we're going to take that moot green, just draw a little line going across the middle of the lens, just like that. Gives it that impression of a lovely glow. So with that moot green applied, we're then going to take a really diddy amount of gorse blaster green. I'm going to add this towards the front. Of each of our moot green lines. Just like that. So with that done. We're then going to take a tiny amount of Fire Dragon Bright. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our Flesh Terror's red gems by drawing just a little highlight in the bottom right corner of each of them, like so. Now 
And with that done, we're then going to take some Luganath orange. We're going to add this as a little dot right in the middle of where we've added our Fire Dragon Bright. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Jean Steeler Purple. We're going to do the same thing on the purple gems. So adding a little highlight at the bottom right corner of each of the teardrops. And with that Jean Steeler Purple applied, we then take a tiny dot of Emperor's Children. We add that in right in the middle of where we've added the Jean Steeler Purple. Just like so. And so with that done, to finish off all of these gems, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take a tiny dot of Corax White. I'm gonna add this at the top and opposite to where we've added all those color highlights. So for example, just there, we're gonna add a little tiny dot of Corax White just there at the top, like that. Same on these gauntlet ones. Little tiny dot at the tip of each of the teardrops. Like that. On the eye lenses, just gonna have one in the back corner. Like so. And what we're also going to do with the Corax White, whilst we've got it, we're going to use this to relayer our skull on the shoulder pad. Just avoiding anywhere where all our shades have settled. So with that done, we've just got one or two more things left to do. Next of which is going to be the paper and the color we're going to use to highlight this now is Screaming Skull. So with that done, we've just got some finishing touches to add. You could leave it there, because he already looks amazing. But, as I said, we do have a couple more things left to do, just to really elevate him and put him on the next level. So, what we've got is we've got the kind of marbling lightning effect on the shoulder pad. We've got the kind of bluish energy on the base of the sword. We've got a little bit of freehand on the paper there on the shoulder. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the sort of marbling effect and the colour we're going to be using is Dawnstone. Now we're going to thin it down a little bit more than we normally would, which is like two parts water and just a little bit more. So it's nice and thin. And what we're going to do is we're going to just draw some very jaggedy lines with the Dawnstone. With a very small brush. Do this all over the shoulder and once that's done we'll come back and so with that dawnstone applied what we then do is we take some administratum gray we're going to take tiny little dots of this basically what we're going to do 
which is going to find the areas where the kind of lines all start to intercede. I'm just going to add little kind of nexus points. like that. So with that done, our shoulder pad is finished. So what we're going to do now is we're going to paint in that blue energy at the base of the sword. And what we're going to do is very simply, is we're going to take some contrast medium and some Talisar blue. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the contrast medium on our brush, like this, not that much. And we're just going to apply it to the area that we want to add a bit of Talisar blue, like that. Give the brush a wash, then grab a tiny amount of Tanisar blue, not that much, and we're just going to add it like that until we're happy. You can also wash the brush and just feather it out just a little bit. We want it to just be kind of quite a subtle effect. And so with that blue hint added to the base of the blade on both sides, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some wild wood. I'm going to use this to write in the word Baal on his shoulder pad. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to start with the A's. So we want to do an A here. Like that. We can do the cross in just a minute. Then we're going to do an A. gives us the playground in which to do the B and the L. So the L can go just here. And the B can go there. Tiny amounts of wildwood on your brush when you do this. Like so. And one of the other things we're going to do is we're not going to leave it just looking like that. What we're going to do is we're going to make it look a little bit more gothic y. First, I'm just going to strengthen out those characters. And finish off the A. to do this is to take the wildwood and then just next to each of the letters draw a symmetrical line comes across so like with the A there and then just join it up at the bottom and at the top so for example just here on this L
just like that. Just bulk out those lines by adding the occasional extra one just next to each of the bits of the detail until you're happy with it. And so with that done, all that is left to do is to color in the base. And well, it's just the rock. So you can do this however you like. I'm just gonna use some Basilicon Gray. I'm just gonna paint this all over the top. And then I'm gonna fill in the base in the same style as the rest of my Blood Angels. And if you'd like to see how I do that, you can check out how to paint nuclear wasteland bases, which is available here on YouTube. One of the oldest tutorials here on the channel. And so with his base completed in the same style as the rest of my Blood Angels army, Dominion Zephon is now finished. I really, really enjoyed painting this guy. It's awesome to see a really cool character from the Master of Mankind novels being brought to life in plastic, no less, just like with Fafnir Ran. Really enjoyed this, of course, because it's Blood Angels. And, you know, I'm a pretty big Blood Angels fan. So I'm going to be spending the next couple of weeks figuring out a way to use him in my 40k games as well as my 30k games. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.